Welcome back. This is chapter 10, part 4. In this part, we'll learn about cost function estimation. We are going to focus on short round cubic cost function. So let's get started with total variable cost. This is a functional form assumption that we are going to have. Total variable cost is going to be equal to A times quantity plus B Q raised to the power 2 and plus C Q raised to the power 3. So cubic name comes from the third power here. Okay, so in the short run, remember we have total variable cost, we have total fixed cost, and that makes it total cost of production, right? Average variable and marginal costs are uh, to be calculated from this really easy. Average variable cost is going to be total variable cost divided by quantity, and short run marginal cost is the change, first derivative of total variable cost with respect to quantity this can be total cost itself too but because fixed cost doesn't change it's the same as um, looking at the change in total variable cost okay so average variable cost we said total variable cost divided by quantity so divide this whole thing by quantity you're gonna get a q divided by q a a b q raised to the power to divide by q a b q and C times Q raised to the power 3 divided by Q, Q it's going to be C Q squared. Okay. What's well, the short term marginal cost? So short term marginal cost is going to be first derivative of total variable cost with respect to quantity. So we're taking the first derivative of this. A times Q, first derivative of Q is going to be 1A plus this 2 goes up front, 2b times q raised to the power 2 minus 1, 1, q itself, plus this 3 goes up front, 3c, q raised to the power 2. That is the short run marginal cost curve, okay? So that's what it looks like, that's exactly what I said. And cubic specification produces a nice S-shaped total variable cost and u-shaped average variable and marginal cost curve so variable cost total variable cost has this shape total variable cost and remember average variable cost u-shaped marginal cost also j u shape passing through the lowest point of the average variable cost curves so let's talk about the properties of short run cubic cost function Average variable cost reaches at its minimum. Okay, how do we find this? Remember, average variable cost was A plus, I'm dividing everything by Q, plus CQ raised to the power 2. So it reaches at its mi minimum point, right? So I'm looking at the average variable cost lowest point. You're going to take first derivative of this, DAVC divided by DQ, and equalize it to 0. Let's do that. It's going to be first derivative of a constant with respect to q is 0 plus bq uh, first derivative of bq with respect to q is b itself plus 2cq equals to 0 pull this q you're going to get negative b over 2c that's the minimum point of the average variable cost curve call it qa i don't know okay so also make sure this is a convex function to have a convex average variable cost curve, the second derivative of the average variable cost curve needs to be greater than zero. So take the second derivative of this guy, right? Sorry, take the another another derivative of this because this was already the first derivative with respect to Q. So your 2C needs to be positive. So because 2c needs to be positive, c needs to be positive, that's rule number one, that's one requirement. c needs to be positive, this needs to be a positive number, if c is positive, b needs to be negative, so that negative negative, I get positive quantity, b negative, and finally folks, a needs to be a positive number, okay? So, this is what, <laughs> now we are re revealing everything on the slide, this is the minimum point of average variable cost curve. I called it QA, it doesn't matter, QM, that's the same thing. To conform to the theoretical properties, you have to satisfy C greater than 0 to have convex average variable cost curve. A needs to be positive, B needs to be negative. 
This is how you get a nice S-shaped total variable cost and nice U-shaped average variable cost curve and a JSU shaped marginal cost curve. So this is the summary of cubic specification for total variable cost table, total variable cost, average variable cost, marginal cost, minimum point of average variable cost. This is called also shutdown point. We'll use this in the next chapter. So this is going to be the quantity level that gives you the lowest point of average variable cost and you can calculate by plugging this quantity in the cost function and find the dollar amount and below this any price below this shutdown point you're going to actually shut your business down. A needs to be positive, B needs to be negative, C needs to be positive and estimation of short run costs. Data collection may be complicated by the fact that accounting data do not include firms opportunity cost sometimes, known as the user cost of capital. So we're going to talk about two things, two issues that we have in estimating short run costs. Especially capital costs should reflect not only the acquisition cost. Let's say I bought a computer for and server for ten thousand dollars for my business. But also you need to look at the foregone rental income, depreciation and capital gains and losses. Nominal cost data is the other issue. Data that have not been corrected for the effects of inflation, especially in 2022. Uh, we had experienced a lot of inflation, right? Post COVID world. So what happened is that you may be producing the same. Let's say I'm producing 100 bikes a week. Okay, you can be producing the same bikes with the same capital and labor, but if the cost of capital ingredients have increased, the input cost has gone up, you're producing the same thing at a higher cost. You need to correct for this. You have to eliminate the effects of inflation by what we call deflating nominal cost data to make it into real data. Okay, so correct for the influence of inflation by dividing nominal cost data by an approximate price index which is called the implicit price deflator i'm going to teach you how to do this so let me give you an example problem of inflation okay so let's say you go to grocery store or supermarket where you buy uh, groceries so you have a certain basket of goods and services i'm going to draw a basket this basket for instance costed you in 2010 okay hundred dollars it's the same things no, you got eggs, you got milk, you got bread, veggies, this and that, but you're buying exactly the same basket. In 2011, this cost you $101. In 2012, this cost you, I don't know, on an average $99. So this is deflation price has gone down. But let's say this bundle costs you in 2022 $120. This means okay the real basket didn't change but what's happening is that the cost has gone up so what you have to do what you see here is 20 percent increase in the cost of living you need to account for that i need to really follow the real bundle which didn't change okay they say 2025 20, this bundle is 150 so i mean inflation is normal little bit inflation two percent per year is expected that's fine. But more than that is a big problem. So going back to this, let's say your physical units of output didn't change, but the cost of producing has gone up, right? In months, because this is measured in nominal dollars. Another example about inflation is for instance, pools, swimming pools, swimming pools. Uh, you could get a small swimming pool in this area in Texas was this was about thirty thousand dollars last year and there's news going on and the cost has doubled okay so you can get a small one now for fifty five sixty thousand dollars and the reason being reason being the concrete concrete is more expensive all those iron wires rods everything got more expensive okay so we are going to correct for the problem of inflation to estimate the cost functions and we'll tackle that in part 5.